Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Podcast Business Grow Secrets. You're your host Adam Stott. Really excited and really excited about the topic we're going to be talking about today, which is all about Twitter. Yes, Twitter is something that we've not covered too much in the podcast previously and I'm going to tell you exactly why. And I'm going to tell you some of my thoughts on how I feel Elon Musk could potentially add some massive, massive value in the space of social media, social media marketing, and actually to businesses. So I think it should be a really, really interesting episode. So if you've been using Twitter for your business to get new clients, get new sales, and get some new leads, then you're gonna find this really interesting. And if you've ever considered using Twitter but not known how, this could also be very, very interesting to you too. So let's jump into the podcast episode. Welcome back to this, another episode of Business Growth Secrets, and I can't wait to get started. Okay, let's jump in. So one of the really common questions that I'm asked, being that I run events, both online virtual events and in-person events, on how to get your social media firing, bringing you leads, clients and sales, I'm often asked about Twitter and I'm asked, hey, you know, is Twitter something I can use to grow my business? Is Twitter something that I can use to get new leads, get new clients? And unfortunately, today, I've had to answer the question as a big resounding no. And why is this? Well, our experience with using the platform Twitter, yes, we've got a Twitter profile, I have a Twitter profile, we've used it in the past, but there's a few problems if you're a business owner and you want to generate leads. First and foremost, the problems in the past that have been very simple is that Twitter moves so fast in a consistent basis that actually gaining someone's attention and actually getting them to take an action is very, very difficult for a business. So when you're tweeting and you're putting your message out there, it's disappearing at such a fast rate that you have to tweet several times continuously to gain the attention and impressions that you want, which makes it a bit of a problem because of how fast the platform moves. Now secondly, the advertising function of Twitter has also been a very, very difficult platform for business owners like myself and like you that's watching right now to be able to use to get leads for your business and grow your business. Now let's explore why. Twitter has all the same functions as say your Facebook, your Instagram profiles, your TikTok, in that you can run ads to generate traffic. So let's say you want to send people to your website, you can run ads on Twitter to do that, and you can direct people off Twitter onto your website so you can get them into a conversation. And if you've listened to my previous episode of the podcast, where I talked about sending through social media, you remember what I said. And, and what I said very clearly is that the real key to the game of social media, if you're somebody who wants more clients, you'll want more leads, you'll want more sales, you want to use social media to generate income as a business owner, then one of the biggest problems with that is speed. Because if this is a, a mobile phone, and somebody, if you look at this as a mobile phone right now, and you look at the process, typically what happens is people sit there scrolling. And as they sit there scrolling on the mobile phone and they stop, what typically they stop for is a second or two, and then they keep scrolling, and then they stop, and they keep scrolling, and sometimes something will catch your attention, they'll stop and they'll look at it for a short period of time, and then they'll keep scrolling. Now the problem with Twitter is because of the limited amount of characters that you've got, and because of the nature of the platform itself that is moving so fast, that you are able to generate traffic from Twitter in quite a large abundance, but the attention span is so short, it's very difficult for you to take someone off Twitter and turn it into a conversion, like it has been in the past. And that's what's made it really difficult. So for us, we've experimented with Twitter ads for a long, 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 long time. You know, when they first came out, we started using them in previous businesses of mine and, you know, two mixed results. Never got really great, great results. Never was able to scale uh, Twitter ads because it just moved too fast and we couldn't get those conversions. That was a big, 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 big problem. So what I wanted to talk about today is it's still like that, right? So if you're listening to this right now, you might be running Facebook ads, you might be running YouTube ads, you might be running Instagram ads, and you might be getting some varying degrees of success with them. And maybe you've not tried Twitter ads, you've never set it up, you've never tried it before. You know, our experience is that when we have run ads on Twitter, we're able to generate lots of clicks, 
and lots of traffic but hardly any conversions. So what I'm hoping now, being that Elon Musk has come in, took over Twitter, and they're obviously looking for new monetization opportunities. And with social media channels, typically the monetization opportunities, there's different ways that Elon Musk could monetize his platform. So one of the ways, one of the biggest ways, would be through advertising. Now, if he wanted to make advertising work, and he wanted to increase the revenues of advertising, then he's going to have to find a way to help us business owners to generate more leads through that platform. If that is his plan, all right. So one of the things and, and the challenge there is being able to turn clicks into conversions, and I think that's something that has to be a primary focus. That's not the only way that you can generate revenue through social media channels. Now, of course, one of the things that Elon Musk would have purchased with his 44 billion pounds is masses of data. So data is a huge asset for any business. And in buying Twitter, he's bought all the data, right? So he now owns all the data and all the data that's been collected over the years with Twitter, which is massive, right? So he could look to monetize that data uh, for businesses potentially. Um, I even read in the Financial Times that he's gonna be looking at licensing data as well, which is another way that you can monetize. And there are massive opportunities. So a lot of people are like, oh my God, is Elon Musk crazy for paying 44 billion pounds? for this uh, social media channel that is essentially a sleeping giant, I would say that he realizes and knows that there is monetization value in that platform. And there's lots of different ways that you can monetize social media platforms, one being through advertising, another being through data, another being through licensing, and there's so many more. So it'd be really interesting to see what he does next with this channel. But the thing I love about Elon Musk, let's talk a little bit about him as an entrepreneur, and the thing I love about um, what he's been able to do as an entrepreneur is he's been able to be create masses of innovation, and often he's been quite underestimated in what he's trying to do, but he's made some big moves over the years, and some of the things, I've followed his work pretty closely, I've read lots of books on Elon Musk, uh, because I love some of the things he's done, um, I've you know followed the articles of, about Elon Musk and really looked at it. And one of the things that inspired me to buy a Tesla, right, of, of all things, I never thought that I would buy an electric car, I tell you. But one of the reasons I bought one was because of Elon Musk. And one thing that I've noticed in having a Tesla is the infrastructure that he's built for that brand is phenomenal. I mean phenomenal. You know, everywhere you go, you've got specific charges for your car. They're virtually in every major service station and petrol station, meaning that whenever you want to charge your car, you're hardly anywhere away from a Tesla charger. The other thing that he's done is if you have another electric car, you don't have a Tesla, then you can go and charge your car up, but it takes hours and hours and hours to charge it. If you've got a Tesla, you can get charged in 30 minutes or 40 minutes or an hour, depending on which model you've got. So he's really reduced the time that it takes to charge that brand of car, which I think is really interesting. Because what Elon Musk seems to do very, very well is he gets to understand who his client is, and then his mantra is add value. How do you add value to that client? And through Business Growth Secrets, if you've been listening for some time, you know, some of the things that I've explained is, you know, if you want to win in business, you've got to know who your client is, you've got to know what their problems are, and then you've got to come up with solutions for their problems, and you've got to find ways to make it easy for them. And I think he's been the master of doing this, uh, certainly through what he's done with Tesla, because one, he's made it really easy to charge a car anyway. Two, when you charge a car, you don't have to pay anything, you just plug in. It automatically gets billed from your account, from your Tesla account. So you never actually see what you get billed for the electric on an ongoing basis. The whole setup and infrastructure of, of Tesla is just phenomenal. And it's very, very easy. Now, in terms of the car, the technology is outstanding. All right. So um, previously, I had a Bentley Bentayga, loved it. Uh, really, really, really like the car. Moved to Tesla because of some of the massive tax breaks and things that you get um, by having a Tesla, which is cool. But then actually, the reason I'm sticking and the reason I haven't changed my car yet is because of the infrastructure, how easy it is, and the technology that's built into that car, which makes it leading. 
So you've got to look at these things. None of this is by accident. So when you look at Twitter, if Elon Musk can have any kind of impact close to what he's done uh, within the Tesla network and within the automotive industry for, on a social media platform and format, I would say that the people out there in terms of Facebook, your Instagram, your YouTube, they should be worried because what this guy's done with Tesla is phenomenal. You know, it is now the leading company in the world in terms of automotive. It's, it's valued more than Ford Motor Company and all the other major companies out there. And the reason is because he's done a number of very smart business things. So let's look at, because this is business growth secrets, and I want to tell you some of the smart things he's done. Number one, he's looked at who his client is. He's done that in a great way. He's looked at what problems they have and he's looked at ways that he can solve those problems. He's looked at how he can make it easy for the client, which is really, really important, and then he's looked at how can I get repeat purchases. Now, one of the most important things in business is not just getting new clients, is getting those clients to purchase off you again and again and again and again and again and again. And that is exactly what he's done with Tesla. So I would say that do not underestimate and don't sleep on Twitter. As a business owner, if you want to use social media to grow your business, there's going to be big opportunities in my mind for what's coming up with Twitter. Perhaps he's going to improve that advertising function. And hopefully he is because, you know, he'd be getting my business all day long. And when you look at advertising on social media and advertising for your business, and if you're listening to this and you haven't been following the things that I've been doing for a long time, one of the things that I've often said is if the easiest fastest way to grow a business and the best way to make money in business is to learn how to turn advertising into profit. Now what advertising into profit is, is very simple. When you can spend a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars on ads and generate ten thousand pounds back in sales and you can do that on a consistent basis, you're never going to look back. Because then it's just put another thousand in, make another ten thousand, put another thousand in, make another ten thousand, put a thousand in, make another ten thousand. That's where you want to be in business. That's like the holy grail of business, turning advertising into profit. So knowing what's happening in the social media landscape, if you look at Meta, you look at Facebook, what have they done? What some of the problems been with their advertising platform? Well, some of the problems is that even if you've been a long-term customer of uh, Meta and you've spent millions of pounds, which I have with Meta, with Facebook, on Facebook ads and Instagram ads, is you've probably come across and suffered restrictions on your advertising account. And when you've suffered those restrictions on your advertising account, there's never been anybody to speak to, right? There's never been anybody that can turn that around. You have to go for a live chat. You virtually get no customer service at all, even if you're spending a million pound a year with Meta, which is crazy, which tells me there's a problem in the market. There's, a, there's obviously a product or a service via Meta that allows you to get out to the masses and turn advertising in profit, which us business owners want. But there's a big problem with the customer service side, with restrictions, uh, with you getting accounts shut, with the, the, no customer service at all. So that tells me there's an opportunity. And Elon Musk being as smart as he is and being as great as he is at what he does, that tells me there's a huge opportunity for small business owners coming to be able to start advertising through Twitter and being able to start getting the message out. And hopefully, hopefully, you know, uh, Twitter's gonna enter that, um, enter that race to really win small business owner like you, like me, like anybody that's self-operating a business anywhere between, you know, 100,000 pounds to 25 million pounds to be able to take that market share and start to get those advertising dollars and pounds. And I've got my fingers crossed that Twitter is now gonna be entering that space as a new opportunity for us to create ads. Now, what I'm also hoping and, and what I've seen is obviously if you look at the rise of things like WhatsApp and WeChat in China, um, they've become very, very powerful tools for communication. And if you look at what um, Elon Musk has done with Tesla, he has really set up an infrastructure, a community and a culture for Tesla in a big way. And if he can do the same thing with Twitter,
where he can start to set up a messaging platform alongside a social media platform, alongside a way for you to connect with people and engage with people, then that could be a very, very powerful new thing coming. So I think you should watch the movements of what's happening with Twitter very closely as a business owner um, because I think that there's going to be major, major opportunities coming up. And look, I don't know exactly what they will be, but reading between the lines and reading about it, the uh, talk of a overall power app which combines purchasing, communication, culture, and being able to speak to people on a social media platform like a mega app, it sounds like that's the route that Elon Musk is potentially going to look to go down with Twitter. So it could become a very, very powerful tool for business owners. So you might be asking, like, Adam, what do I need to do right now? What you need to do right now is just be aware of what's going on. Look at the changes that are happening. Look at the features that are being put in place and look at maybe start increasing your presence again on Twitter because it seems to me that there really could be a shift in the social media landscape that could bring this back to the forefront as a great social media channel to help you grow your business. So keep updated with the changes, look at the changes, start to be a bit more on trend with what's happening and do not for any reason underestimate you know, the richest or one of the richest men in the world in Elon Musk and his ability to put customer problems first and solve those problems. Because if you do, you can miss some major opportunities. So it's just some thoughts for you on what I feel the future of Twitter could hold. Maybe if you haven't got a profile, go and get one. If you have got a profile and it's a bit dead, you're not using it, start using it again. Keep up to date with the changes and start to see what happens with the sleeping giant because it could present you with some new opportunities. So hopefully you found that valuable. Uh, a couple of tips and a couple of thoughts on what um, Elon Musk has done and you know some new opportunities that could arise in the near future. I wanted to do this episode to keep you on trend with it. Hopefully you've had some value from that and hopefully you're enjoying the podcast, right? We've done lots of episodes where we've done some really great interviews just a couple of episodes ago. I interviewed John Caldwell, the billionaire, um, who sold phones for you, who owns the uh, largest, most expensive home in Britain. And he told you his critical factors for running a business. I highly encourage you to listen to that episode. I think it was a great episode. We've got new guests on all the time who are adding lots of value. So if you haven't already, please do make sure to subscribe to the podcast and that's really important. 